Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Fernando Florido and I'm a GP in the United Kingdom. In today's episode, I look at a random case of hypertension to see how the NICE guidelines could apply to it, focusing on the pharmacological treatment. By way of disclaimer, I'm not giving medical advice. This is for healthcare professionals only, and it is only my interpretation of the guidelines, so you must use your own clinical judgment. Remember that there's also a podcast version of these videos, so have a look in the description below. Right, so let's generate a random patient. If you want to miss this, just go to the next track on this video. Right, so we have an 85-year-old lady whose ethnicity is white and who presents with a clinic blood pressure of 168 over 83 and who is not on treatment for hypertension and who has three other comorbidities which are vascular dementia, macrobuminuria and heart failure. Okay, so we have an 85 year old Caucasian woman presenting in clinic with a blood pressure of 168 over 83. She's not on treatment and therefore we will assume that she has not been diagnosed with hypertension before. So let's have a look at the NICE guidelines. Firstly, NICE says that if the clinic blood pressure is between 140 over 90 and 180 over 120, we need to offer ambulatory blood pressure monitoring to confirm the diagnosis. And if ambulatory blood pressure monitoring is unsuitable or the person is unable to tolerate it, we will offer home blood pressure monitoring instead. So we assess this patient and because of her vascular dementia, we find that she will not be able to tolerate ambulatory blood pressure monitoring. So we will arrange a home blood pressure monitor instead. NICE also says that while waiting for the confirmation, we should carry out investigations for target organ damage and a formal assessment of cardiovascular risk. And we can see that she has been investigated previously and we know that she has several comorbidities such as vascular dementia, heart failure, which we will say here that it is heart failure with reduced dejunction fraction and macrobuminuria which, for the purpose of this case, we will say that there is no evidence of structural renal tract issues, so we're going to presume that the working diagnosis is hypertensive nephropathy. And all of these three comorbidities indicate end organ damage. Also, there's no need to assess formally her cardiovascular risk because she already has established cardiovascular disease. Right, so we organize the home blood pressure monitoring and let's say that we get a home blood pressure monitor result of also 168 over 83. Isolated systolic hypertension, according to NICE, is when the systolic blood pressure is over 160 but the diastolic blood pressure is not raised. So in this patient's case, we will say that she has isolated systolic hypertension. Does she need treatment? Well, NICE says that we should offer people with isolated systolic hypertension the same treatment as people with both raised systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Stage 2 hypertension is when the blood pressure is 160 over 100 or higher, but less than 180 over 120. This effectively means that this patient needs to be treated exactly the same as if she had stage 2 hypertension. And NICE says that we need to offer antihypertensive drug treatment in addition to lifestyle advice to adults of any age with persistent stage 2 hypertension, but of course using our clinical judgment for anyone with frailty or multimorbidity. We assess this patient and consider that despite of, or even because of, her multimorbidities, she needs to be started on treatment to lower her blood pressure. According to NICE, the target clinic blood pressure for those aged 80 and over is below 150 over 90 or below 145 over 85 if using ambulatory or home blood pressure readings, again using our clinical judgment for people with frailty or multimorbidity. Right, so we have decided to start medication. How do we treat her? If we look at the visual aid resource from NICE, 
he says that for people without diabetes and over the age of 55, step one treatment should be with a calcium channel blocker, right? Well, yes and no, because it will depend on the case. There's always the small print to worry about, and we find it here. NICE says that for people with chronic kidney disease, we should follow the NICE guideline on chronic kidney disease, and for people with heart failure, we should follow the NICE guidelines on chronic heart failure. To be fair, although we know that she has microalbuminuria, presumed to be due to hypertensive nephropathy, the history does not really say that this patient has CKD. But it does say that she has heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. The chronic heart failure NICE guidelines say that in order to reduce morbidity and mortality, we should prescribe both an ACE inhibitor and a beta blocker, escalating to adding spironolactone and more if necessary. One drug should be introduced at a time, adding the second drug once the person is stable on the first drug, and we will use our clinical judgment as to which drug we will start first. So my interpretation in this case is that I would start an ACE inhibitor, for example lisinopril 2.5 mg daily, for both her heart failure and hypertension, titrating it up to the target or maximal tolerated dose. And as soon as possible after that, I would also start a beta blocker licensed for the treatment of heart failure, for example by Soprolol 1.25 mg daily, also titrating it up to the target or maximal tolerated dose. And I would do this for her chronic heart failure only. However, although beta blockers do not appear as an option in the management of hypertension, we do know that they can also have a blood pressure lowering effect, so it is likely to be beneficial for her hypertension too. Remember that she already has vascular dementia, so it is likely that she has a degree of widespread atherosclerosis, and we should start the ACE inhibitor cautiously and watching her renal function closely, in case that she has already developed renal artery stenosis. And of course, remember that, because she's over 80, we should routinely measure both her sitting and standing blood pressure. And if there is a significant postural drop or symptoms of postural hypotension, we will base the blood pressure target on the standing blood pressure value. But remember that this is only my interpretation, so it is not necessarily the best option. Please let me know your views in the comment section below. We have come to the end of this video, I hope that you have found it useful, and if so, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.